Hello. This video serves as a welcome and introduction to the AP Capstone Seminar Program at the STEM Early College. Hello. I'm the doctor. Not really. I'm Miss King. By this point, you've been in my apes class and seen my apes welcome video. So I'm going to skip all the niceties and jump straight into the meat of this video. So what is AP Capstone? Generally, we talk about AP Capstone as a two-year program developed by the College Board to give you college-ready skills that colleges are looking for when you get accepted. So let's look at the sequence of courses and the things you can achieve if you take all of them. All sophomores are required to take AP Seminar, which is the year one course. It has three performance tasks, one of those being an end of course exam. The second year is optional and is a selective course, which is AP Research, which requires you to conduct independent research and develop a paper and presentation. Successful completion, meaning three or higher in AP Seminar and AP Research, can earn you the AP Capstone Certificate. If you complete both of those and successfully complete four other AP exams, meaning a three or higher, you can earn the AP Capstone Diploma. You'll see this diagram is just another way of looking at what we just saw. You'll notice that in AP Seminar, you have a team project and presentation and an individual research-based essay and presentation, along with an end of course exam. AP Research has an academic paper and a presentation and oral defense. That's the theoretical idea of AP Capstone. Let's talk specifically about AP Seminar and what you're really going to do. The goal of AP Seminar is to make you good, independent, and preliminary researchers with a focus on being able to identify quality evidence and understanding how an argument is structured and what makes an effective argument. Put more fancy, that is, to learn how to critically engage with evidence, arguments, and conclusions through written and oral skill demonstration. You'll see this image show up several times as we work through the course. This is the foundation of AP Capstone. QUEST is an acronym standing for Question and Explore, Understand and Analyze, Evaluate Multiple Perspectives, Synthesize Ideas, and Team Transform and Transmit. These are the core skills that you should be able to demonstrate by the time you leave this course. Let's do a quick review of how you're going to develop and demonstrate those skills and earn an AP score. Performance task one occurs in a teacher developed team where your team identifies a topic of interest and researches it from different lenses or perspectives. And we'll talk about those terms later. Each individual in the team will produce a 1200 word literature review, which we call the individual research report. Then, as a team, you'll use the information from those IRRs and develop an 8 to 10 minute presentation that gives an argument. You'll also have oral defense questions, but these are not included in your time limit. Performance task two is when individuals will use a common theme in a provided stimulus materials package provided by College Board to individually identify a connected topic of interest, research it, and develop a well-written and cohesive argument in a 2,000 word paper. This is known as the individual written argument. Afterwards, you'll give a six to eight minute presentation, not including your old defense questions, that shares your argument. At the end of the year, during the regular AP exam window, you'll take an end of course exam. In this end of course exam, you'll use the skills that you've developed to be able to evaluate and critique evidence, think about argumentation, and also to develop a cohesive argument given a theme and some sample sources. Here's a graphical representation of your AP score contribution. Performance task one is worth about 20%. Performance task two is worth 35%. If you notice, that's 55%. 
Over half of your AP score is already determined by the time you take the end of course exam because you've already submitted your PT1 and your PT2. The end of course exam contributes about 45% of your AP score. Okay, so what is expected of you? What are you really, really going to do? You've seen this before in my Apes Welcome video. Winston Churchill says that continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking our potential. This is doubly true in this class, where there is no real content to understand. The goal is in acquiring, practicing, and demonstrating skills. So effort is going to be key. Failure is going to happen. And you have to be willing to work harder than you've probably ever worked before. Because this will be uncomfortable, especially for those of you who are used to memorization to get you past a class. Okay, so let's talk some expectations. Digitally, you are expected to participate responsibly, respectfully, and consistently in either live classes or discussions. You're also expected to work collaboratively with your group members and respond in a timely fashion. In writing, Work consistent for improvement. Take feedback and goodwill and apply what is functional for you. Provide peer feedback honestly and constructively. And give credit where it's due. Do your own work. Generally, this class is about demonstrating skills, not memorizing content. Follow your guidelines and your pacing guide to reduce the stress of the projects. Work together. Be willing to give and take honest, constructive feedback. What digital resources will you need? These are generally the same as APES. You'll need access to the AP Capstone Seminar Canvas course, access to the AP Capstone Seminar AP Classroom, and Remind, where I will send you information and you can contact me with questions. So physically, what resources are you going to need? It's your option if you would like a notebook. It may be helpful to keep notes and reflections about the things that you've been learning and feedback that you're given. You'll need pens, blue or black only, or pencils only for in-person assessments. A laptop or some computer with access to Microsoft Word or Google Docs. And a camera with a microphone with recording capability. Once again, this is similar to APES. I'm not going to rehash this with you. Remember to read your detailed explanation of academic integrity on Canvas. Be familiar with it. You'll be held to the same standards whether you read it or not. This is especially important in AP seminar as you're doing a lot of research and proper attribution is crucial. You can get dinged for plagiarism with College Board with very simple mistakes. So how are you going to know how you're doing? This is the stuff that I'm going to do. Like apes, this has an additive grading component. Everybody starts at a zero and works their way up. There are several different components of this course that are different than one that you would normally see. You have your performance tasks. These are your actual PT1 and PT2 both papers and both presentations. These are worth 400 points. That's a really good chunk. That's a third of your grade. You'll have classroom participation, exam, practice assignments, reflection essays, and then your final exam. The grades that you were given for your performance tasks at STEM are not the same as the ones that you're given by College Board. We use our own rubric in order to give you those grades. You will have a copy of every rubric and checklist that we use in order to give you a grade, and you'll have an opportunity to ask questions about those rubrics as we go along. It's important that you know we are unable to give you any idea of what your score for performance task one or two papers or presentations are until after May 1st. This means that your grade may be really well through quarters one, two, and three, and take a pretty serious hit in quarter four 
if you haven't put in the effort to make your PT 1 and 2 successful. Those grades will all go into quarter 4. This is a College Board policy. This allows us to be free from giving you any kind of feedback, as this is something that is prohibited by College Board for these tasks. Once again, remember, you're learning new skills, so nothing you do is going to be perfect the first time around. Your first attempts will receive feedback on the scale of 90 being complete, meaning it meets the requirements of the assignment, but it always has areas for improvement. 75 meaning it's partially meeting those requirements, 50 incomplete meaning it meets some of the requirements, and a zero, either it's missing or it didn't meet any of the requirements. You'll receive some kind of feedback and you'll have the opportunity to address revisions alone or collaboratively and resubmit the assignment. The revision attempt will be graded and contribute to your course grade. It's important to note teachers cannot give feedback on the actual PT1 or PT2 process. This feedback is likely to come from your peers. Once again, let's talk about STEM grading and College Board grading. College Board prohibits the release of any scores for a performance task until after all submissions are finalized on April 30th. This means we cannot release those grades to you or share your rubrics until May 1st. You will not see a grade for anything associated with your performance tasks meaning rough drafts, final drafts, or presentations, until May 1st. Two rubrics will be used for your assignments. The College Board rubric will be used for the presentation score. This is the score that is sent to College Board to contribute to your AP score. STEM rubrics will be used for both papers and presentations. These are the rubrics that will contribute to your score at STEM. So how are we going to do this virtually? This is a whole different ball of wax than APES or any other course you're going to take this year because it's a focus on skills, not content. It's definitely not going to be easy and it's certainly not going to be comfortable, but we will get through this together. The big things to think about here are to stay on top of things. Ask questions and talk to me. I can't help you if I don't know where you're struggling. So what should you do now? Now that you have the basic overview of what AP Capstone is, now you have a chance to look at what you actually need to do. The very first thing you should do, of course, after getting into Canvas, is to join the class remind by texting at STEMAPCS20 to 81010. This will add you to the class remind and give you access to sending me messages and getting those messages from me. Join AP Classroom by following the instructions that are posted on Canvas. After you've done that, review the following information in the general information module on Canvas. You need to look at the class academic integrity policy and the college board plagiarism policy. Lastly, you should complete the self-reflection assignment in the general information module. Then, using the instructions on Canvas, join a peer review group. 